It's the weekend, so relax and listen to some stories the whole family can enjoy. That's right, it's the Saturday Story Circle, here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. Chapter 12 The wind cut across the high peaks and whipped down into the mountain valley. August Fenwick, now known as Two, staggered under the weight of his burden. Master Rashan had dispatched him to gather fuel for the fire, no mean feat in this high country, and Fenwick had scoured for hours to assemble the unwieldy collection of brambles and kindling he now bore. As he reached the steep slope of the path that led down into the Sadhu's Kuti, the uneven footing seemed to get the better of him. He found himself cast off balance, and he pitched forward toward the jagged rocks that shielded the path on either side. In an instant the skills born of his long training burst to life. The kindling scattered as he threw his arms wide to counterbalance his fall. Acting against the instinct of a normal man, he turned his forward pitch into a dive, pulled into a tight somersault in midair, and landed on the flat edge of a protruding boulder with the agility of a monkey. He barely had time to complete the landing before he heard the sound of slow, mocking applause from a short distance away. His head shot around to face the source of the sound. Seated on a ledge to his right was the master's other student, the man who now insisted on being called One. Very nice, the elder student said. Very deft for one so clumsy. August felt his ears redden and his pulse quicken. He stepped down from his newfound perch quickly, and with as little fanfare as possible. "'You are full of surprises, my young friend,' one smiled, though there was little change to his hawk-like countenance. "'Just lucky,' Fenwick grimaced, regarding the scattered pile of wood and feeling anything but. "'Nonsense,' the elder student replied, standing. "'You have skills, and I would be a fool not to recognize them.' The man called Two froze in his tracks. There was a deeper import to the words of his fellow student. He turned and met the impassive, predatory stare, and said nothing. One smiled. Better and better. You listen much and speak little. You are not like the typical fools that find their way to the master's kuti, seeking enlightenment in a single day. And you have had training. August shrugged. Gymnastics. At school, he said casually. It is better to speak truth than to be thought modest, one replied. Sometimes, the young man replied cryptically as he began to reassemble his burden. Still better, and worse, the elder student smiled. But for the moment I do not speak of your physical prowess. Fenwick's brows knit, puzzled. I don't understand, he replied. One stepped down from his perch and moved smoothly across the uneven path towards his fellow initiate. "'I think that you do,' he said calmly. "'I had occasion this morning to recollect your arrival here yesterday. Something about you seemed unusual.' "'Is that right?' The young man's ears were reddening again. There was something about one that set his teeth on edge, and he couldn't put his finger on it. One smiled. Imagine my surprise when I found myself unable to recall your face. Fenwick tried to control his response to show nothing. That happens to a lot of people, he said calmly. One shook his head. You are the first person other than Master Rashan and myself to set foot in this valley in seven months. And yet I found my memory as clouded as if I had met a hundred men yesterday. And I say again, you have had some training. The pair of students locked eyes for a moment. At last the man called Two shrugged a little. I spent some time with an American stage hypnotist. His act was good, a little too good to be nothing more than trickery. One raised an eyebrow in spite of himself. This charlatan knew the ancient secrets of the mind. Fenwick shrugged again. He knew a little, 
enough to be useful if you'd rather not be remembered, or to pluck a simple thought from the mind of another, an image, a name. Enough to make you certain there was more to learn, more to know, one said, his stare becoming still more intense, as if he were struggling to read the young man and meeting only a cloud of misdirection. Perhaps. There is much to learn in this place, young one. I can offer you much help, one said, relaxing his stare and smiling with something like warmth for the first time. Fenwick's eyes narrowed with suspicion. Such as? One closed his eyes and looked for the stillness within himself. Finding it easily, he reached out with his mind into the physical world, the tendrils of his thoughts feeling for the scattered firewood. August Fenwick gasped in spite of himself as the pile of precious wood reassembled itself in mid-air between himself and one, and hung there without visible support. One opened his eyes and spoke without apparent concentration. Telekinesis, one said calmly. Not my specialty, but it has many uses. Fenwick composed himself quickly. Such as tripping me up on the path in the first place? He smiled in spite of himself. One's eyes narrowed, but he did not bother to deny it. I think we understand one another perfectly, he said. Sonic Summerstock Playhouse is on the air! Exclusively on Mutual, the Summerstock Playhouse is an annual celebration of old-time radio remakes by modern-day audio drama producers, each putting their own special spin on a classic program. Don't miss a single episode, Sundays in July and August, only on Mutual. Better living through audio.